This is what my mornings look like as a 25 year old stay at home girlfriend. I fill up Luke and I's water bottles to make sure we're hydrated. And then I made myself a bloom green juice. And then I made Luke his latte. I make him an iced latte with cinnamon and maple syrup and homemade almond milk. Then I tidied up our bedroom, made the bed. Then I did my very long skincare routine. It's like 20 minutes long and ice rolled. Then I did my five minute journal and went on a walk on the beach to get a coffee with Luke. And then I put my workout clothes on, did a workout at the gym with Luke. And afterwards made us some smoothie bowls with some superfoods. And I made myself my second caffeine drink for the day, matcha latte with Bloom's collagen. And then I planned out the rest of my day in my new planner. These nine to five jobs just suck our souls and just deplete us mentally, physically, emotionally. It's a lot. It is a lot to do. So theoretically, you know, staying at home, resting, relaxing, you know, not having to work hard for your money. That sounds like a really, really good idea, right? However... Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley Viola and I make pop cultural analysis videos. And today we are going to be analyzing the latest TikTok phenomenon known as the stay at home girlfriend trend. Now you may or may not be familiar with the trend, but for those of you guys who are not familiar, essentially these are women who choose not to work because they are performing domestic duties around the house and running errands and relaxing while their boyfriends go out and work at first glance it's like you know staying at home and not having to do anything you know we're coming off of the I don't dream of labor movement where so many young women were expressing why they no longer aspired to work and they didn't have a dream job and why they were just tired of being exploited and taken advantage of and often for little pay we saw the rise of that movement last year and philosophically I do agree I always like to say that capitalism kills. Capitalism is not fun. Capitalism is exploitation. Capitalism has, you know, the people who are working the hardest, making the least amount of money. We already know this. Like, I have a very deep anti-capitalist politics. So the idea of not working, that actually sounds really good to me. These nine to five jobs just suck our souls and just deplete us mentally, physically, emotionally. It's a lot. It is a lot to do. So the Theoretically, you know, staying at home, resting, relaxing, you know, not having to work hard for your money. That sounds like a really, really good idea, right? However, obviously, for those of you who've been following me for any number of time, you know that I do have some thoughts around the power dynamics that, you know, ensue in relationships like this. I'm just gonna give you the lightning round version because honestly, that's not even my biggest gripe with the whole stay at home girlfriend trend. But the Cliff Notes version, obviously, power dynamics, money equals power. When you are subjecting yourself to staying at home and not working while someone else is your meal ticket, it's just a common sense thing for me that relying on any other person to provide for you financially, whether it's a man or a woman or a non-binary person, probably not the best idea. You should probably have a nest egg somewhere of your own money to rely on and the idea that you would rely on someone else for your financial security seems just a little bit not the most pragmatic thing to do because relationships can dissolve at any given moment in time and just the idea that your man can up and leave you uh broke 
and destitute and without any kind of nest egg to fall back on for me personally that does not seem like the best idea with this uh stay-at-home girlfriend trend you're seeing that these people obviously do not have a legal commitment in the eyes of the law so should their relationships dissolve at any moment in time there's no spousal support potentially that we can talk about alimony child support if they're having children there is no legal protections in order to secure your finances if you do in fact choose not to work you know at least with stay-at-home moms and stay-at-home wives like when you have a legal commitment in the eyes of the law should your relationship cease to exist there is still some legal protections that can help you to get money after the fact and i've heard the girls say the submission girls on social media on tiktok they're like you submit to your boss so why don't you submit to your man well first of all you're not sleeping with your boss there is a separation between personal and professional let's start there <laughs> like marrying those two lives to me i just don't think that's the best thing to do relying on the same person that you sleep with for me love is a equal give and take and uh i don't know that love and respect can mutually exist when there is such a huge power dynamic of one person uh controlling all of the finances and the other person having to rely on that other person it sounds like a child and a adult relationship but we know that children are the most vulnerable population that there is for that reason amongst many other reasons so the idea that you're going to rely on someone else for your finances again it just doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do whether you're in a heterosexual relationship homosexual relationship whether you're in a pansexual relationship really doesn't matter i think just the idea of uh, marrying your professional and your personal and that that just seems to me like a recipe for disaster no surprise there right video over done right drop the mic done done no more no of course Fundamentally, I disagree with this kind of a lifestyle, but that is not the reason that the stay-at-home girlfriend trend is a problem. Disclaimer, obviously it is a problem, but it's just not the only problem. The reason that the stay-at-home girlfriend trend is a problem is that it's all a lie. Yes, you are in fact being lied to because while these young women want to tout their lifestyles of leisure and just rest and just having the flexibility to not having to give all your time and energy and suck your soul at a nine to five job, you know, they present this facade. In reality, these ladies are in fact working because they are making a whole brand and a whole TikTok persona out of this lifestyle. When you look at who are the faces of the stay-at-home girlfriend trend, you see that many of these women, all of these women have hundreds upon thousands of followers. You see that they're verified. You see that they're clearly in TikTok's creator program and clearly raking in an income based on you, as in the collective you, watching this and aspiring to to be like them you're helping to put money in their pockets they're not in fact living this leisurely lifestyle i saw this tiktok that i'll insert here on the screen as well where basically it's like influencers be like they're trying to stage this like morning routine video or here's what i do in a day or watch me clean watch me do this watch me do that you know in order for them to produce that content it requires them to work to get their camera together, get their lighting together, maneuver and position the camera in different places around the house. These women are working. In order to truly be resting, you can't be simultaneously recording yourself living this leisurely life. No, you're working. And I've said this about the soft life trend. I've said this about the that girl trend. The idea that they are creating this whole brand around their lives of leisure and their so-called soft lives, their so-called just drama-free, rest-filled lives is a lie because these girls are working and they're making money off of your gullibility to be quite frank i i hate to say that but <laughs> they're making money off of people watching their content and resonating with it and wanting to live this lifestyle when i wake up in the morning i start by staring out my window for a few seconds to just breathe in all that sunlight energy and positivity then i get out of bed and i begin my day 
working from home is still working that's all these girls are doing is they're working from home are they going to a traditional nine to five job no but they're building a brand and they're working from home and i just feel like I can't help but to draw the parallel between the stay-at-home girlfriend trend and the Real Housewives. I was a long time fan of the Real Housewives franchise and one of the reasons I stopped watching it is because once you've seen and you've been watching them for a year, you just see the same patterns, the same stories over and over again and it's just like, okay, I've seen this before. And so with the Real Housewives, again, that title is a misnomer if you wanna be completely honest because none of these women are housewives because you're watching a reality show in which they are getting a check, which they are getting paid to produce. If you're a longtime fan of the Real Housewives franchise like me, you find that with these women who choose to be on these reality shows, they are bored. They have nothing to do. They've spent a large portion of their lives being housewives and they don't have an identity for themselves. They don't have anything to call their own and they're bored and they're depressed and they're taking Xanax and all kinds of antidepressants to get through their days because they're so depressed so they seek out fame and attention through being on these reality shows right and they are effectively no longer housewives because they're getting a check they're pulling in an income they're getting paid thousands millions of dollars in order to be on this show that's called the real housewives and they're anything but housewives and you see also with these shows the constant power dynamic the constant cheating that that their husbands subject them to. I think of Jennifer Aiden from the Real Housewives of New Jersey, who literally said that she found out that her husband cheated on her and she obviously proceeded to take him back and continue the relationship. And it's like, well, obviously, like, and that was before the show, you know, prior to being on the show, he was cheating. And I'm just like, well, obviously she's gonna decide to stay in the relationship. And you see that trend amongst many of the housewives whose husbands have cheated on them in the past is that they choose to stay in the relationship despite the cheating despite the lack of trust despite the breaking of their commitment to one another they choose to stay in these relationships because well they don't actually have another option of anything else to do their husbands are the breadwinners their husbands are the ones who are creating this lifestyle this lavish lifestyle for them so are you really going to choose to leave that person even though they have clearly lied to you uh disrespected you and taking advantage of you you are going to put yourself inevitably in really bad situations in order to keep up with the lifestyle that you have obviously taking your husband or boyfriend back after cheating is not a phenomenon that is only unique to housewives and potentially stay-at-home girlfriends as well Obviously this happens in relationships where both partners work and it's definitely a larger symptom of misogyny and just the internalized misogyny that many of us women often battle with and just the idea that the reciprocity will never be there. If a woman cheats on a man, nine times out of 10, he's out of there. That relationship is over with and done. But women obviously have the tendency to want to ride for their man and be there for them no matter what. And so it's obviously a larger symptom of patriarchal thinking and pick me as up or misogyny, however you wanna brand it. It is ultimately something that happens with all women. However, I do find that with the housewives, it really is alarmingly, incessantly so. And these women just literally have nothing else going for them. And so they allow men to cheat on them over and over and over again. And they put up with it for many years until of course their uh, child support, alimony, prenup, kicks in if they've been married for a long amount of time. They wait, they're very strategic about getting a divorce. A lot of people have said that a lot of these women actually go on these shows in order to get a divorce so that they can build an income, so that they can build a life for themselves, so that they can expose who their husbands really are and ultimately get divorces, which is actually kind of smart. I have to hand it to them. <laughs> I also find that who are the women who are the faces of this stay-at-home girlfriend trend? White women. So when it gets down 
to it, we know that black women tend to be the breadwinners of their household. So they don't have the luxury. We don't have the luxury of being able to be stay at home girlfriends or even stay at home moms for the most part. I mean, some black women do not to say all black women, but the vast majority of black women do not have the luxury of doing that. And with a black woman, when you're not married to your partner, and especially if you have kids, you get stigmas like the baby mama trope and like the unwed mother trope and all of these um, different negative uh, associations with doing that. I think that it's very clear that this trend is mostly reserved for a white women for that reason because black women simply do not have the luxury while i agree with the sentiment of the i don't dream of labor movement where they are like not wanting to be exploited and not wanting to work themselves to the bone in order to you know get a paycheck and make a living i understand why people don't want to participate in that i don't want to participate in that personally however i feel that work can look differently for for everyone i do want to offer exceptions to people who can't work due to their being disabled or being neurodivergent. I'm neurodivergent. I am not including those people in this. We default to a 40 hour work week is like what counts as having a job when that's not the case. Like even if you're making very little, even if you're you're even volunteering or whatever the case is, more so than earning, you know, financial income which under a capitalist society we all have to do in some way shape or form. Outside of earning an income, working gives you purpose, gives you your own individualized identity. And when your whole identity is wrapped up in someone else's identity and someone else's life and well being, I just don't feel like that's a healthy way to live. I feel like everybody needs to have their own goals and their own dreams and something that they're working towards because it gives you something to strive for, it gives you something to be productive, form critical thinking skills and your own independent thinking skills. And with these stay-at-home girlfriends, even though they are in fact working because they are earning an income and building a brand, that brand is still ultimately attached to their being someone's girlfriend. And I think that that's still very toxic to one's mental health. And the TikTok creator, 1000 milligrams of ibuprofen, <laughs> really creative name actually took a screenshot of tiktok creator kendall k's journal which she featured in one of her tiktoks about being a stay-at-home girlfriend and had well let's just say some very interesting observations this is what my mornings look like as a 25 year old stay-at-home girlfriend i the whole time i was watching this video i was thinking that seems like hell um, but then at the end, I decided to like screenshot her planner because I was so curious about what she could possibly be planning for. And then I read it and it's like, like she's writing about her like reflections, I guess. And she's writing unsatisfied with my looks, which I mean, who amongst us, but, um, stagnation in my career, satisfaction, fulfillment, lack of fun, social life, excitement the contrast between this very aesthetically styled vlog and like this aspirational content that she just put in front of us and this very real and very raw diary entry full of like her dissatisfaction with the lifestyle that she just i guess put on display is just really interesting and kind of jarring working nine to five is not for everyone i'm not going to be the girl who's like yeah everyone should be an entrepreneur because you know not everyone has that dream of necessarily being an entrepreneur in that way and i do feel like there is a balance and i do feel like it's human nature and it, it's it's good for your own mental health to have your own activities to have your own dreams and ultimately i think to have your own money in the case of any kind of emergency in the case of if if your relationship dissolves because i want people to have the autonomy to feel like they can leave their relationship if the relationship is not working for them anymore without fear that they're not going to have any kind of income to fall back on and to be quite frank a lot of the men who are wanting to be in these relationships with women who do not seek to work want to exert control over their partners similarly to these real housewives we see that these stay-at-home girls 
girlfriends are bored and they need something to do because why else would they make it a whole brand and form a whole trend out of being stay-at-home girlfriends i feel like if they were content in that they would simply be content and not look to make it a whole brand and monetize it these women are selling a lie that is not going to work for most women quite frankly and is quite frankly not working for them because they are not not working they are raking in an income on tiktok on instagram on various social media platforms based on this aesthetic that they've created for themselves so i definitely want to hear from you all in the comments down below what are your thoughts on this stay-at-home girlfriend trend what do you think is wrong with it do you think that there's anything good about it i would love to hear from you all and in our famous last words which is always so appropriate for every single video somehow i'm like every single time it hits like it hits every single time but in our famous last words on this channel i want to leave you with a quote from the amazing civil rights activist fannie lou hamer which is nobody's free until everybody's free thank you all so so much for watching and if you like this video definitely hit that like button and if you really liked it and you want more content like this definitely hit that subscribe button and i'll talk to you all next time